Let's look at the Victron Wirebox protector for the bottom of the MPPT charge controller. Hey folks, I'm Nigel from Offgrid, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at the Victron Wirebox protector, I guess you could call it, which goes on the bottom of the Smart Solar MPPT charge controller. This is a very popular range of MPPT charge controllers. We sell a lot of them through our shops, ranging all the way from the 7015 model all the way up to, I think the biggest that we sell is a 250 by 150. So they're really good charge controllers, a massive range, Range of sizing that you can do very versatile we install these in all different applications motorhomes vans boats cabins you name it we've used these loads and this is a really neat product that not a lot of people know about it's the Victron Wirebox which is essentially a protector that goes on the bottom of the charge controller like that and what this does is it protects your wires from something coming in and shorting them but also has a bit of a clamp system that holds the wires in place and stops them from moving and being able to wiggle out of the bottom of the charge controller or something along those lines so I'm going to show you how it actually installs and what comes in the box. So in the box you get the actual wire box which is this thing here. You get a metal frame, you get a little clamp thing that clips into the metal frame here. So these are usually separate when you first get them in the box and then you get a couple of the clamp tops that go onto here to hold your wires and then various bolts and, and uh, screws there that everything gets put together with. So I'm going to take you through the process of actually installing this so that you can see how it all works and how it all ties together. I'm going to start off by removing these two things off the back here. So these look like they might be black screws. They are in fact plastic or rubber. So sometimes when you go to unscrew them, they actually don't come out. They just sit there spinning and spinning and spinning because they sometimes actually don't have a thread. So I think the last time I tried to take this side out, it didn't actually spin out. It gets to a certain point and just sits there spinning. And I don't know if you can see that clearly in the video, but there's actually no thread on it. It's just, it's just a mess because <laughs> it's not actually a screw. But what this thing does is this thing sits there nicely, kind of goes between the earth or the ground screw that sits in the side of the chassis and these other screws that hold the front blue plastic cover onto the chassis. And so to secure this on here, <clears throat> it takes these, which I think are M4 grub screws or bolts, I don't know what you call them, but you put a little washer on there, they come with a washer and they go into those holes that you've just removed those plastic blanks from. And that tightens down like that. And then we repeat the same process for the other side. Sometimes when you first put these screws in, they can be fairly difficult to get in just because the thread is fresh and not it's not easy. So just be wary of that and not to cross thread. You may want to just back it until you hear a click on the thread and then you should be good to go. So next thing here is we're actually going to put some cables in here just to give a full demo. So we're going to start off with our, what are we going to do? We'll go with our B, B minus, B positive even. I don't know why I was putting the red in the negative. That's not where it goes. So we'll put that in there and we'll tighten it down. And then we will put the black one into the negative terminal there. And you can put different size wires into these. Obviously that's not best practice. But if you're wondering whether it works, I will demonstrate right now. So this is a 16 millimeter square that's going into the PV positive. 16 millimeter square is the maximum you can put onto this charge controller, which is 150 by 45. And this negative wire that I'm holding now is actually a 10 millimeter square. So they are different sized wires. And as I mentioned, not best practice, would not recommend, but for demonstration purposes in terms of how it actually works with different size wiring, let's go. So then you get these longer, screws here. They also come with little washers for each of these and you get these little clamp tops here. What those do is that they go with these things that stick out the bottom there. Those go between the wires and they clamp your wires like so. So you then put that bolt through and find sometimes you have to work it a little bit to actually find the hole. It goes all the way through and this is going into plastic here so don't tighten it crazy tight because then you'll could cross thread it <clears throat> and we repeat the process on the next side. Obviously that, as I mentioned, is in different sized wires and it fits on absolutely fine, goes on there nicely. And now we will do it with uniform same size wires. And with 16 mil wire, it's actually quite a challenge to get it through here sometimes. Sometimes you have to fiddle with this a bit and it's actually not ideal. You wanna really get that separator through there before you start trying to wind it just because then that'll protect your wires a little bit so that you don't have the screw actually cutting the sides of the wires. And let's get this going here. 
Right, so that's separated your wires nicely. Obviously, if you if you don't push this through there, your screw, the threads could cut through the insulation on your wires. So I'd recommend lifting the wires up there as I did, push this little clamp thing through there so that the thing that th sits through between them separates the wires and then it stops your bolt from actually cutting the insulation. So those are looking pretty good. And I quite like this because what that does is <clears throat> if there's any play on the wires, it doesn't actually play on the terminals and move the wires around there. So it works really well. And once you put the wire box on here, as you can see, there's plenty of space below inside the wire box for your VE direct cable to plug in there. So when you put this guy in like that, you then have two final little bolts, screws with washers and I'll turn this on its side so you can see but they go through this hole here and there is a threaded hole on the side of that metal frame that you put in before that they screw into <coughs> so that goes in there like that screw it into that bracket that you put in at the start and again, you're not tightening that crazy tight because it's just holding this plastic thing in place. And there we have it, folks. The wire box from Victron for the MPPT. That's a really neat finish to the charge controller. Completely protects the terminals. There's no way of shorting anything in there. You can't get screwdrivers in. Still space for your VE Direct to come out. Doesn't affect the Bluetooth. Really secure. Doesn't affect the cooling at all because it's nice and flush to the back there. Your cooling fins still have plenty of room there. And all around, it's a great finish to the product. We'll definitely, definitely recommend one of those. If you're interested in that, we have them in our shop. We'll put the link down below in the description. And if you have any questions or comments, if you enjoy these videos, we'd love to, you to comment down below. It really helps the channel, helps more people see these videos. And uh, we'd really appreciate that. But yeah, thanks folks for watching. If you have any suggestions on other videos, other products you want us to have a look at or comment on or demonstrate, then please let us know again in the description down in the comments down below. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.